Collectors, dare I say, and I don't want to insult anybody, uh, generally it can be considered hoarders. You're buying and you're storing. Yeah. I'm buying, educating, storytelling, hopefully inspiring and motivating people to do and find their own passion. So right. I, I distinctly call myself a historian. So. Welcome to the Sevo Show. We have a different background in the studio. A whole bunch of uh, Michael Jordan memorabilia or toys specifically. Now, we have Josh here on the show. We've got a one-on-one -on -one style face-to-face. <laughs> -face. Um, Josh, thanks for being on and thanks for using the studio before this to film your uh, thing. Thank you. Let's talk, about, let's talk about this all. This is crazy. You got the, uh, the main man, the goat of the 90s. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, th <laughs> thanks for having me here, Seb. It's been some time that I've been following you and stuff, so I just want to say thank you for your time and no uh, for your help and uh, services today. So no thank problem. you. No uh, Yeah, we are talking about the greatest player of all time, Michael Jordan, of course, and uh, just sharing here with you and your viewers today uh, some of the most important and significant pieces uh, in his toy collection. So when you were younger, you were a kid, you had your toy basketball hoop, mm -hmm. very similar to the one behind you. Yep. And uh, what was that, uh, a present from the parents? Correct, yeah, Christmas 1994. Nice. Uh, it, it was actually the exact replica of this hoop, which is what I bought back and started this whole collection. So nice. it's nice to uh, reconnect with it and all those nostalgic memories is what really kicked off all this. So you remember the first um, game you ever watched um, when you saw Michael on the court? Uh, I don't remember, but it would have been sort of around the championship time that Luke Longley played. Now, that's probably 96 thereabouts, but uh, if, if a lot of people probably don't remember, obviously social media wasn't around at that time. It was very hard to capture and watch games, even full games back at that time. It was normally about 12 o'clock at night after Letterman, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, look, I, it was just one of those things that I don't remember exactly seeing his first game. But, again, for a lot of people who don't know or are aware, Magic Johnson's my favourite player of all time. We'll, we'll so, get there, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. So. so he's not your favourite player. Mm. Um, Michael Jordan's not your favourite player. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have thought. Mm. Um, and so you were obviously a Lakers fan, still are still a Lakers are. fan. Correct, yep. Awesome. There's a whole bunch of that to unpack <laughs> in a second. So um, back in 94, Yep. how old were you back then? 16. 16. Yep. And you hadn't seen Michael on TV at that time? I'd say no, I hadn't have, no. Yeah. Obviously you, I'd heard about him, yeah. but n I'd never watched the game yeah. up until that point, yeah. yeah. And uh, as a kid, you were growing up, what sort of toys did you have back then? A lot of He-Man, a lot of the good stuff, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yeah. um, just the general stuff. But it was this hoop that I had that really sparked everything because I was able to play with my mates on this hoop against them you know what i mean like we, we could recreate without obviously having the athletic prowess of jordan dunks and stuff like that the, the rim itself is a breakaway rim so when you dunk it it doesn't break it allows you to pull it down you know in a motion like that so we could be quite forceful with it it was those memories and and nostalgia i had with it playing with my friends that really stuck with me as opposed to any other toy that i'd ever had awesome awesome and Besides the replica Jordan uh, hoop, mm -hmm. um, what was your first figurine, action figure? Space Jam. Space Jam. Yeah, so I remember that uh, I had the Space Jam Bugs Bunny. I don't think I brought it. Oh, yeah, I think it's that one down there, down oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's it from Space Jam. So I had that. Nice. So that came out obviously around the time when the movie came out. That was 96. Uh, That's cool. So I had that, that hoop. Man, yeah. that doesn't even look like Michael. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> looks like looks like if uh, Shaq I think, stretched. Well, the licensing was pretty, you know, uh, not not as uh, detailed as what it is today. So, but th that that's what I had to start off with. And then as I grew older and moved out, say a year or two after that, um, I'm sure these things ended up in the bin. Uh, my parents got rid of them or or done something, but I hadn't seen or had any I didn't hold on to anything um, until 2015 is when I started really looking again and I found uh, this hoop and that's what's really triggered it off amazing so the toy historian mm -hmm. and okay so moving forward into the uh, early 2000s Jordan's uh, 
retired or yep. he does come back from mm-hmm. retirement for a stint uh, at the Wizards. Mm-hmm. Um, when he did retire after the Bulls' uh, six championships, um, were you all, all in by then? No. I, this really started for me back in 2015. So yeah. what, another, I think it was about 13 years after Jordan retired yeah. that I actually got into this. Um, but when Luke Longley was playing with Michael Jordan, that sort of brought more attention from here to the Bulls and stuff. But I told you, I'm, I'm a lifelong and loyal LA Lakers fan. So yeah. even that didn't sway me enough to want to be a Bulls fan yeah. with that connection. Um, yeah, I stay true to my Lakers still to this day. That's awesome. And and that's where like a lot of people uh, obviously choose the best player, mm-hmm. the one that's most successful because they live vicariously through that success. Yep. They don't want to choose an up and coming. They don't want to take the risks. They want to be winners even yep. though they didn't do anything. Correct. They just they just say, "Yep, I'm a supporter. I'm I'm the best as well." And um, you know, like the bandwagon fans. Correct. Exactly, yeah. Right? Yep. And uh, we'll get to the other other players in a second, which I'm excited about. See if I can um, <laughs> stir you up a bit. Um, but yeah, back to the toys. Um, before you had your collection um, in your in your 2000s, right? Mm-hmm. So the first decade of the new century. Mm-hmm. Um, what were you doing there? And the reason I ask is um, it's it's more of a, for the kids. You've made. Uh, this as your thing and you're, you're becoming known for this. Mm-hmm. Um, what were you doing um, out of high school? Gee, that's a very good question. I've done a lot of jobs since I've out of high school, a lot of remedial jobs, uh, transport, truck driving, stuff like that. It wasn't until... Hold up, hold two up. Th- Yeah, yeah, go on. <laughs> it wasn't until 2012 that I started doing FIFO. Um, at that time, I was doing a four-on-one roster, four weeks away, one week home. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did that for three years straight at that time, uh, up until 2015. Lakers did something three years straight during that time. They did. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Um, and then 2015, I knew it would be my last FIFO gig. And at that stage, I was uh, – I'd purchased a home. I was paying off a home. And I was sort of – I guess I was in a crossroads of whether to pay off a home or buy something – that would reflect my hard work and dedication to my to my career. Uh, I opted not to pay off my home and opted to buy something that would technically turn out to what it is today. So that was a tough decision because I was married at that time and caused a lot of conflict. But um, I believe in purpose. I believe in being able to find what you choose and wish to do and, and take that forward. And though I didn't know it, obviously, at the beginning, um, it was more or less buying back nostalgia, I followed that feeling of purpose. And I quickly discovered there was nobody in the world doing what I'm doing. So that, for me, allowed me... I'd rather be a 1% than a 99%. And that's why I'm not a sneakerhead, because a lot of people collect sneakers. I choose to walk the path that hasn't been walked before. And I enjoy that, because through that dedication and hard work and perseverance, you might open up to new opportunities and realms that you might not have known existed before. Oh, let's dive deeper. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, so... So um, the purpose of my show, Mm -hmm. um, just as an essence and reminding everyone, is to uncover that purpose and how you found it. Yep. And how you pushed through it, Mm -hmm. even though your marriage, um, that marriage failed. Mm -hmm. Um, What was that like in 2015 and... Yeah, run us through that because that's what people are afraid of. Thank you because it's a tough discussion. Uh, It was a lot of tough times, I guess, because I'm dealing with somebody who I've built a relationship with and a common goal would be to pay off a house. So imagine me saying, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do something that I want, which is quite selfish when you're in a partnership. But I trust my inner... You know, feelings. I have a great relationship with God. I call it purpose and meaning. And I can only say that I didn't hear a voice. It was an intuition and an instinct. And that pushed me and led me to not pay off the home, but buy something, as I said, that would reflect my hard time and efforts for what I've done. And what was it? What you see here today. Um, the, the first thing? Well, this is the thing. So I started buying toys because I've always loved toys. Mm-hmm. And I was doing movie toys. And there's a great range of So I was doing Ghostbusters, uh, Gremlins, stuff like that. So I wasn't focused. And I've always watched Antiques Roadshow. I love that show. I love it too. Banger. And I love those experts and people who are unique in their 
individual craft and stuff like that. So I'm like, well, I want if I like basketball and I like toys, let's merge it. Yeah. So because Magic Johnson's my favourite player, I started looking for Magic Johnson toys on eBay and he had like 20 toys. So I thought, well, this is going to be a challenge I'm going to overcome within a day, two days, you know, <laughs> yeah, making yeah, good yeah. money. When I remembered the nostalgia of that basketball hoop behind me, I looked on Michael Jordan toys and there was 27 pages. Wow. So I said, right, I've set myself a challenge. Let's buy one of each. And that's how it all started. And how much did that cost? I spent a hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand in yep. one hit. All together, yeah. Uh, no, initially, I mean. Oh, well, initially I bought this one back, so this was like five hundred dollars. Yeah. But then I bought that one back, mm -hmm. and I bought the other one back, and yep. then from there the interest just kept peaking, and I'm like, okay, I'll f I'm pretty sure I know what I want to do now. Can we paint a clearer picture? Yeah, sure. If that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. You said you were about to pay off the house. How much was left? Five hundred thousand. And over three years, I was earning two hundred thousand a year. Yeah, and so you quitting that job stopped that from happening. And then also, what did you do next in terms of income? So two thousand eighteen, I finished up. I got a hundred thousand dollar payout, which allowed yeah. me to have six months off work, yeah. which is what I felt I needed after six and a half years of being in that grind. Yeah, I really just hung out with friends and just sort of reconnected with my. With myself just gave myself the that's time. important yeah absolutely mental health is a huge thing especially doing what i do yeah um so i just wanted to reconnect with my friends and stuff like that because i'd missed out on so much um after that i went to america i went to 10 cities uh which was fantastic got a lot of great stories from there came back and i picked up on work that i'd done before fifo so transport logistics truck driving forklift stuff i enjoy but not paying as well because i was more happy to be home every night because i appreciated the simpler things yeah. at that stage money wasn't to me everything anymore it was more about the experiences and and having uh, a better quality of life i'd say yeah, of course with of course. friends and family so okay and what about the house well I, well we got separated in august 2020 House went out for sale and this was part of my thinking as well. If I had have paid off the house and I was the majority earner and paying it on, I would have walked away with less because she would have got – well, she ended up more, getting more anyway because I had to pay her an additional money not to take – she was coming for my collection as well. Oh. Yeah. So I paid her an extra 20000 not to take any of my toys. And when I asked her, what do you want them for? She said simply to burn them because I know how much you would be hurt and hated that. Wow. So I gave her an extra right. twenty. Exactly, I gave her an extra twenty grand, so I could have my toys. And as you can see today, we're having this conversation and other things that have happened because I still believe in my purpose and my mission, which is through the toys. Toys over a woman who didn't believe in your purpose, didn't have faith, wasn't a faith, didn't believe in God. So I, I would look at that and say, I, I because of my faith. Because of my relationship with God and because of my understanding of my purpose, that has allowed me to rise above a terrible situation mm -hmm. and come out on top still and being, being grateful, yeah. appreciative that I, I'm doing what I love to do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Yeah, so, you went, so now you're all in and you're collecting and you're bringing these in. How often now do you acquire a new Michael Jordan piece of yeah, figurine? Maybe once every four or five months. The reason being is I have so many. I yeah. still have a lot. Well, there's quite a few I still need to get, but mm -hmm. I like to leave it as a future challenge. Yeah. I have a family. I have a beautiful fiance now. I have a, she's seven months pregnant, so we yeah. have a little baby girl on the way. Priorities have shifted and changed. Uh, my relationships are a lot better because obviously I'm dealing now with a, a God-fearing and loving woman, which is fantastic. It's more of an alignment now as opposed yeah. to before there was a friction. So, so you could say... You can say that Jordan saved you, but also God saved you. 100%. Like, I, I'm, on my darkest day, and dare I dare sh uh, share this because I probably haven't shared this with anybody. On my darkest day, uh, when I thought about so doing something terrible, these toys saved me because I thought if I was to do something stupid, these toys still wouldn't have their day. These would, uh, my, I don't know what my family would do with these. So that really drove me to to stick around and see my purpose out so 
this tour has really saved my life. Thank you for sharing that. Mm. Thank you. With your fiance and your uh, future daughter, mm -hmm. and it, it feels it feels like you went and did a bell curve, mm -hmm. like yeah, figuring yourself out and then doing a huge one eighty, mm. and then you're now in a new relationship, which is really working out. Yep. You could always wonder what what if mm. the alternate universe, you know, and uh, choosing that path, the safe and traditional path. I've been down in a similar way where I saw my future in front of me Yep. where I was like, all right, the next thing will be to buy a house, have kids mm -hmm. or get married, have kids, right, with my previous partner. And that all seemed cool at the time. And then something clicked for me. I was like, I'm not myself. Yep. But I didn't know what my purpose was. And fortunately, because I played a lot of football um, growing up, played in the waffle, the injuries happened and then I just fell out of love with football. Yep. And then everything happened at the same time. But without it being all about me for a little bit. That's all right. The... The resonation there is like big time. I'm, I'm not a religious guy. Mm -hmm. I do love the whole believe in the universe thing. Yep. That's kind of how I label it. And everything happens for a reason. And literally within four months, I found a partner. Like she's my wife now. We've been Congrats. together seven years. Yep. And she doesn't let me do my thing. It's I've always done my thing. And she's just said, yeah. That's your life. Yep. Live your best life. And that's kind of become my sort of motto. Yeah, absolutely. Living your best life. Yeah. You've chosen to live your best life, what you see, but it's taken you a couple of decades, maybe a third decade to really kind of hone in on that because 2004, you would have been 20, no, six to, uh, 26, right? Mm -hmm. And then that mid-20s range is where people start to become a little bit more emotionally mature mm -hmm. and then really start to pay attention to themselves. And that's what you clearly did. What would you have to say to people? And we'll get back to the toys. Yeah, yeah, just sure. a bit more philosophical now. Yep. What would you have to say to the people who are stuck in that unsure stage where especially FIFO workers who have a mortgage, who mm -hmm. have a partner, who... Might even have kids. Mm -hmm. That could have been. Did you have kids with them? No, I didn't. That, that would have been even uh, yeah, harder. Yeah. <laughs> but let's say, yep. for hypothetical purposes, you did have kids. Mm -hmm. And you're talking, and let's say you did do the same path. What would you say to those people? Actually, rewind that. That's not a fair sort of comparison. What would you say to people who are in FIFO, who have a partner, who have a mortgage, who are feeling the same way? Communication is key, 100%. That's the first thing, communication. If you're not communicating with your partner mm -hmm. uh, truly, truthfully, that causes a lot of issues because it's – I've always said it's a mental game out there, not a physical game because depending on what your swing is, normally, as I said, they don't do four and ones anymore for a good reason because it's really mentally draining. And so if you're on a lesser roster, I'd still say communication – it's vital to any relationship. You have to be honest with yourself and you have to be honest with your partner. Both ways. 100%. Yeah. It, it, it's sort of tough because you're... Uh, I'm just going to speak from a male perspective. Please. Because that's all I know. Yeah. Uh, you, you wish to be a provider. You wish to be a protector. You wish to be somebody who can sacrifice to provide a better life for your family back at home. That is where I draw a lot of pride from. And I guess a lot of men would as well. Is Absolutely. You, it's, you, you it's wish to do something that's honourable. Where the hunter-gatherers. Correct. So that's, that on your shoulders is something that you just learn to live with and accept. But you really hope your partner is honest and truthful in her role as well, which is nurturing, which is caring, and obviously taking care of things back home. The only advice I really could give, if there's any, again, is, is just to be truthful. Because without truthfully revealing how you're feeling if it's weighing down too much on you like this is where a lot of guys go wrong i've worked with a guy up there who committed suicide from different reasons but again it was family related and it was heavy on him at that time um it, it's it really is it's just about trying to find the right partner which look there is no 
boxes to tick. It's it's a lot of trial and error. Just communicating with each other honestly so you can try find a common ground and then support each other where you can and can't be. And be adults about it. Yeah, exactly. You're like There's no heroes. There's no... Uh, do you know what I mean? Like the, the, to me, there's you have to fail to succeed. Yeah, you do. Failure, failure is learning. Yeah, correct. The L in a basketball game is learning. Correct. Not a loss. Yeah. Fantastic. That's awesome. I'm I'm glad we got there. Yeah. Um, with with the FIFO life and everything that happened at the time, and you wanting to leave that life, mm-hmm. what was your communication to her back then? Uh, basically, I've done this for for so long. I, I feel burnt out. Yeah, like I've done six and a half years of four weeks away and one home. I've been home for three years and the six and a half years. So I've, 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 as I said, I've had enough. Yeah. So that conversation was laid out, and that wasn't an issue initially at first. You know, because with a hundred thousand dollar payout, it's not like we were hurting for money. Right. But when I started hanging out with my friends and doing what I wanted to do, and I'm home every day. That became the issue. Yeah. So slowly that you could see it yeah. spiralling down and down. Uh, and then getting back into the workforce, the money is not coming in as quick as it used to or as much. Uh, that created, I guess, more issues. I, I, to an extent, I felt like a stranger in my own home. Like I was intruding on the very home I'd sacrificed and paid for. Yeah. Finally, before we move on and back to the toys, yep. and this is my perspective on this sort of situation Mm -hmm. financials financial fitness one of my core three pillars that i teach yep um anybody that wants to listen financial fitness is so important to escape to avoid all of these problems not living above your means not Mm. getting into debt not living a lifestyle that's beyond correct just because you want to flex your shit right Collecting toys because that's your thing, that's your thing, that's mm. different, right? Collecting toys because old mate next to you has got a bigger collection. You want to like flex on him so you spend all that money and not taking care of your family. That's, that's not responsible. Correct. Right? You found your purpose. Mm. So moving on to the toys again. And let's go deeper into the toys section. So people will probably fast forward to this section going, finally <laughs> back on the toys. <laughs> Rarest piece of memorabilia. Figurine. Is it memorabilia figurine? What would you define it as? Well, as you can see, I call myself a toy historian. I did yep. that on purpose years ago because I wanted to separate myself from collectors. Yes. Collectors, dare I say, and I don't want to insult anybody, uh, generally can be considered hoarders. You're buying and you're storing. Yeah. I'm buying, educating, storytelling, hopefully inspiring and motivating people to do that and find their own passion. So I, I, I distinctly call myself a historian. So the rarest pieces are ones that you see up there, those Jordan figurines, the red and white ones. Uh, I found those, again, on eBay and came across a great story. But the rarest of the rarest of the rarest is that one you see there with a the white chest. This one here? Yeah, that one. And the reason, can I grab it? Yeah, of course you can. And the reason being is if you have put one side by side to another one, you'll see that the one that you're holding actually has the white chest above the singlet. That oh yeah, and the Nike ticks on that shoe are reversed. Oh. Now, they think Travis Scott was the first one of the first people to do it. Actually, Dennis Rodman had a shoe back in the early 90s with a reverse swoosh for everybody who's interested in oh, sneakers. Wow. That is... But that was done in 1987. So those reverse swooshes were done in 1987. And that's the one that's been featured in international magazines, Google, the newspapers. You know, I've done it all here locally. So that would, is the rarest of the rarest. What would this be worth? Look, this is the thing. Trying to get an independent valuation is hard. There's one guy in America I've been pursuing for years. Uh, his name's Jordan Hembra. He's the toy hunter. Uh, because my valuation on it is going to be different to most. I'm probably sentimentally and emotionally attached to it. But I've had people say that it could be potentially fifty to sixty thousand US. <laughs> fifty to sixty grand for a toy. When I you're talking that. Jordan, anything normally his first, so like his first shoes, first game worn shoes, stuff like that, generate a lot of money. When you're talking about his legacy, especially with toys, and that's the first very the very first figurine, and it's different to the rest, that 
that puts it in another level. Got to hold it again. I, I, I felt like I, I rough handled it a little bit before <laughs> until you give me the price. I feel like I need to wear gloves. <laughs> yeah. How come you don't wear like gloves? And just I, part of it is I like people to to do what you're doing right now, which is hold and experience it. Because if it's in a glass cabinet or a box, like you don't get to see and feel it now. Yeah. I mean, it, it's probably detrimental in the long run, but for me, I, I like people to to feel it, see it. And sort of generally get close to it because it gives you a, a better, I guess, feeling and understanding of what it's like to see something so rare up close. Now, you already told me this, but in summary, why do you have so many of the same ones? Uh, t- look, initially, I bought them because I just loved them. I knew nothing about them. I knew, I knew absolutely nothing. I just loved them. They all came in clear plastic bags. And I just sensed from the day I got my first one, there's something special. There, the arms on that figurine pull back. So you put a ball in there, mm. they pull back and shoot into a hoop. That yellow box next to it is the game box that it should have originally come in, but it wasn't. So we, we, what we're dealing with in these Jordan toys are rare prototype production oh, yeah. figures. So that toy should have been in that box set and yet wasn't. So that's how it started for me, finding <sighs> these in clear plastic bags led to me to phoning my friend who's a Jordan collector in Chicago and saying, hey, do you know anything about this or why are they in plastic bags? Because as you can see, all these toys from that era all come with beautiful packaging. And I remember working up north and I was at, you know, obviously alone at that time and I kept thinking about it and it began to anger me. Like, how could you do the goat like this? Like, he deserves to be packaged. And so when I rang my mate in Chicago, I said, can you tell me what you know? He goes, I don't know anything. I said, you're like an hour and a half away from this toy company. Have you never bothered to ask? And he said, no. So I hung up the phone to him and rang the toy company and they were just amazed that some guy, not only from Perth, Western Australia, but some guy had amassed at that stage probably close to 20 of these when they were saying these were meant to be, uh, these are a prototype production figure, not, not for sale and meant to be destroyed and not released. So they just wow. couldn't believe This is three decades after the manufacturing. <laughs> That's crazy. It That's absolutely crazy. Is. And like, and, and were they purchased from individual sales online? Correct. Not like in a bulk? No, nah, nah, nothing. Wow. Always individual. And how much did you purchase them for individually, if I can ask? Sorry for the interruption, but this show would not be possible without the help of Bright Tank Brewery. They are the major sponsor of the Sevo Show. Huge shout outs to them. Check them out. Great beers, great people, great everything. And, uh, well, let's get back to the episode. The most expensive one, I believe, was the first one. So it was about 400 US. <laughs> you stole that. I, I believe so. These people don't understand. <laughs> oh my God. The cheapest one I got was 75. Amazing. Okay. It reminds me of, um, well, the fact that they had the white guy as the figurine mm. and then using Michael as the poster child and then with the poster inside as well. Correct. Uh, it, I mean, it, I'd love to see what the poster looks well, like. Well, if I can show you that picture up here. Oh, yeah. Oh, want, that's the poster. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. On the back of the poster, Jordan's actually promoting and photographed with the figurine. So this it, is what I'm saying to the toy company. Have you ever photographed and promoted a star athlete with his own figurine and it's never gone ahead in 100 years? They said no. And I jumped on it. I said there's something here. Yeah, that's crazy. That is That is... That's true history right, right there. But as That's you can cool. see on these shoes, so the shoes on the other ones that have the correct Nike tick, exactly, are they a replica of that shoe you just pointed at, which is a Nike Air ship. And the Nike Air ship is the very first shoe Jordan wore in the NBA pre his Air Jordans. And this shoe on this toy is a replica of that shoe. There it is. So I think Nike have even stepped in and said, hang on a minute, this is our shoe on a Jordan toy and we'd get no kickbacks that must have been why he was pulled to the is the nike on the actual white guy figure? no and this is a funny oh, thing that's probably why well this is part of it and i've contacted nike to find out initially they were helpful and said yes we'll get back to you then the comment was like unfortunately we can't help you out because based you will base uh your story on our findings i said of course i am that's searching for the truth wow there it is so the reason why that figurine it's well, part it's of cool. it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So Nike have stepped in, and this is again an interesting story. So I've got the Jordan twos just next to you as well. When Jordan signed his contract with the toy company and on some of these toy products, he's wearing the Jordan two. Now, for people who understand their sneaker history, 
there was something that happened between the two and the three. Jordan wasn't happy with what was going on. His lack of input and creativity was he was thinking about leaving Nike. Yeah. Is in between the two and the three. At the same time, this is happening. This toy is coming out. So I'm pretty sure Nike have stepped in and said, "Look, listen, we can't do this. It's it's our shoe on your toy." Mm. And I think what might have happened as well is Jordan said, "You know what? Stuff it. I don't want nothing to do with this. Just drop the toy, release this, and we'll just be done with it." <laughs> and it should have been swept under the carpet, thrown out. But three decades later. A guy from the same city that his championship teammate Luke Longley comes from discovers this, <sighs> finds it, is intrigued about it, actually goes over to America to the toy company itself to have a meeting with the CEO of the toy company. When I return, it then goes into international magazines, TV, radio, it just blew up. So That's cool. That's cool. And then obviously the shoes. Um, but we're not going to get into the shoes. I'm sorry, sneakerheads. Um <laughs> Obviously, the, the white shoe that's on that then became the black shoe that Nike paid. Nike, Nike paid uh, 5000 a game and then everybody was talking about the shoe and the rest was history and that turned out to be a really cheap marketing budget for Nike. They crushed that. Yeah, absolutely. Use it to their advantage. Yeah. Marketing 101. Yeah. Uh, when I originally heard that story before I got into the whole marketing game, I was like, oh, wow, f they paid $5,000. Man, they obviously believed in him and they, they did really well. And then I learned about marketing. I was like, oh, makes sense. Yep, All absolutely. Right. So um, figurines, uh, I noticed you have a figurine here that has a card as well. Yep. Do you collect cards at all for the Jordans? Uh, no, I collected uh, Magic Johnson cards back in the early 90s. Mm. That was a big thing. Huge thing for those who were around at that time. It was uh, almost an obsession. Um, I still have my Magic Johnson cards. I don't collect Jordan cards. I did have his rookie card, the one that everybody's after. Mm. Sold it at the wrong time before the last uh, dance. Bugger. Uh, somebody got a good buy there. Um, nice. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, these just come with cards and stuff like that. But obviously my main goal and focus is obviously diversifying the collection but more importantly, keep pushing the narrative and the story and, and trying to learn as much about this first toy because I had to have a, a conversation with myself. I, I, I'm quite an introvert, to be honest. Like, I really don't like public attention. But I had to realise that this toy does not talk for itself. Nobody is going to do probably what I can do. And therefore, I must keep on purpose and keep trying to get it out there. And I, I obviously aim to get in front of Michael Jordan to find out what not only he knows, but reconnecting with something that he probably hasn't seen and, and, and might be a bit uncomfortable for him to, to revisit. Oh, well, it's decades later. I don't think uh, his billions uh, will care. Yeah, well. We just wipe the tears. <laughs> I always say legacy is important. Legacy for me starts with the future generations. Yeah. And I always use this analogy. If you put two tables in a room and you get kids between three and eight years old, you put Jordan's sneakers on one table and you put his toys on one table, where are the kids going? Oh, well, probably the sneakers. <laughs> Toys. It's an it's the nostalgia of playing with toys, the memories yeah, that it creates. Yeah, true. Actually, that, I actually was thinking more about teenagers for a second. That's yeah. why I said sneakers. But yeah, you're right. Toys. It is, and, and that's yeah. where you introduce yourself to the newest generations is through your toys. It's through mm. the nostalgia of play, which is why I bought back my hoop. That 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 powerful emotion of nostalgia can't be derived from shoes. It can only be done through power of play and toys, All and right. that's why I want to. Even let the billionaire know himself, your greatest part of your legacy, apart from obviously being on the court, is your toys because you can reach future generations for years to come through your toys. Yeah, the amount of kids that I've interviewed that are into sneakers and they've got the latest Jays, I'd ask them about Jordan and they wouldn't really tell me much. They're just like, oh, yeah, he played for Chicago Bulls and he's the GOAT. Yep. That's it. I'm like, okay, more. And then they would like reference the last dance, which mm -hmm. was helpful as well. Yep. Um, but again, I'm not really into the whole calling someone out for not, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. if you like shoes, great. If you like toys, great. Uh, but yeah, what you're doing here is amazing. Thank you. These are a three-dimensional miniature version of the man himself showing different aspects of, of his play and his career. So th these really offer a unique experience that you can't derive from shoes, cards, anything else like that. So really what you're seeing here 
is, is something truly unique but yet very powerful and this has allowed me to to reach uh headlines internationally now you've got one here it's got a signature on it yes this isn't Michael's signature. <laughs> Not yet. We're getting one, though, eventually. Well, who's this one? That's uh, Luke Longley. So oh. that's his championship teammate who I met uh, last year, I believe it was. Uh, he was doing a speaking tour here in Perth at the Heath Ledger Centre. Cool. And I won a VIP meet and greet, and I knew exactly what I wanted to get signed because it was a signing opportunity. But I also <laughs> took Luke a one wrapped up. So I actually took him a gift box and waited for most of the people to have a chat with him and that and i presented it to him i said look everybody's here really to ask you for something i'm the only person here to give you something i want to give you something yeah and i had it wrapped up he said what's in it i said well i've spent a hundred thousand dollars in seven years to get to this opportunity to have it so inside was one of those figurines with i think i wrote 10 pages of a4 notes of how i discovered it and stuff like that and at the very end if you could please just send Michael an email or a photo of you with that toy, I'm sure he'd be really surprised and interested to see how you got it, you know. So we haven't caught, uh, caught wind of what he's done with it. But, um, yeah, Luke Longley is now an owner of one of Michael Jordan's rarest toys. <laughs> nice, nice. And what was his reaction to it? He was overwhelmed. He, he was quite uh, happy. I had a previous connection with his wife, I think two years before, where I gifted her... Um, a box set of the 1996 championship team. So it was Longley, Rodman, uh, Kukoc, Pippen and Jordan all in a box set. Cool. Um, something similar to like this. Yeah, yeah. And gifted it to Anna Gare, his wife, and for Luke. And when I met Luke, I reminded him of that and he said, yeah, I knew. Nice. I knew exactly uh, who, who you are. So that was a great story. Love that, love that. So um, do you have a plan on how... You're going to land a meet and greet with the big man? Can you imagine how hard it is from here with no PR, no marketing, no oh team? Oh, my God. Uh, an IG following of 2,000 people, uh, and, and only, I only do IG. Uh, it, it, it's quite the push, but I believe in the purpose because once I get there, it's going to be a huge international story. How I'm doing it is by maintaining a, a profile of educating and inspiring. I've being able to do things locally but at the moment we're filming something that is um, going to be seen or, or pushed towards American TV programs uh, hoping to get onto American TV to try and get it more in his face and stuff like that I've had contact with his son Marcus so I, I'm I mean that's pretty close yeah you know, yeah exactly and like the, the vice president of his brand Howard White I've met so I, I've danced around Jordan for years I'm like so the funnel with with his son didn't really eventuate into anything or are you playing it like uh, keep playing, it chill yeah playing it chill yeah. because you yeah. don't want to sort of come on too yeah he'd have so many people going can I meet for you that dad? reason yeah 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 but no, the fact the good. fact that he knows who I am and when I send him a message. He'll normally reply and like it within hours. I've got friends here. I'll send a message and I don't hear for for, for days. <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel very grateful that I have a relationship, I guess, as such. Cool. Um, but I, I'm, I always say I'm probably... And he's bought some of the toys from you. No, I gifted. Oh, gifted. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe in giving rather than receiving. And the more you give, it's putting good karma out there. A hundred percent agree. Things will eventually come uh, absolutely. back. Absolutely, I can't couldn't have said it better. Myself. I've asked for nothing. He gave me that photo just because he could, uh, and it's nice that that's in his office in Orlando. So that was nice to see that. Look, Jordan's probably seen that himself. Now, yeah. one of these, one of these, you, you have to get a close up on, is a custom made toy which I worked with a guy in America to to make. Uh, that took twelve hundred dollars and three months to make. But I, instead of me keeping it, I sent it to to Marcus. Love it. And I'm sure his dad's seen that and said, where the F did you get that from? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm sure MJ's even knows Josh from Perth already. We're just trying to crack that glass ceiling, of course, whatever it is. Of course. So the, uh, the other thing, um, we'll go back to the toys because I've got some random questions. Sure, and thanks absolutely. for sharing that one as well. Uh, when the pop vinyls came out, do you got them? Do you have them? I had pop vinyls custom made years before uh. Michael Jordan released. I think, to be honest, sometimes the Jordan brand and people watch what people do 
they watch a lot of people when they customize sneakers and then inherently release them. I can't take credit for it, but I have. I do have Pop Funkos, but I had them years, oh, yeah. custom made years before they actually were yeah. released. That's like one of the only things that I, for some reason, have that I haven't um, unboxed. Okay, I got yeah. a couple of Jordan ones, yep. and I'm like, I don't really care yep. in terms of the boxing because mm. um, I got a, I got a couple of um, like the, the collection that I have is Dragon Ball Z, yep. um, but just like a couple of things because mm-hmm. I love, I love Dragon Ball Z growing up. So I've got a Goku pop vinyl and just all of those cultured sort of things like Tekken. And then uh, I've got I've got a Ronald McDonald and I've got um, the Colonel. That was a hard one. Yep. Uh, but then it's I just feel like they're becoming more like beanie babies. So that's right. why I'm not like, oh, um, I wish I wish I had them here, the Jordan ones. But you already got them. I would have gifted one no, to that's you. Fine. you that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. I, 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 had, I had a feeling you would. Um, but yeah, so like for my experience with toys, my nostalgia was at school, um, the Tarzos, the little yep. Tarzo coming out of the chip packets. I think they had basketball ones. That I've one got time. a Michael Jordan set, there Tarzo ones. There you go. Unwrapped. The still, Space so. Jam ones. That's right. The, yeah, the, I think I might have some of those. There in you the go. Box. There you go. Um, and then I got into the Pokemon and the, the Dragon Ball Z. The Dragon Ball Z was all time for me. Yep. The Tarzos, the, the fluoro ones and then the gold ones. Oh. That was like the peak of my childhood yeah. in terms of like collecting stuff. That was what I had. And uh, we'd play at, at school and the figurines. There was some other random ones. But yeah, my, my growing up, the toys for me wasn't, wasn't like the figurines wasn't a big thing. It was Lego and then the consoles, the video games. But just on that, yeah. see the way you just spoke then about the power of playing nostalgia. You mm. don't get that from shoes. No. See, no. You, you've just caught on to what, yeah, what I'm yeah, just yeah. saying before. For sure, like, for sure. Th- that It's that emotion that's derived from playing and and being with stuff like that. that yeah. That's the impact, I think, that Jordan needs to eventually focus on, it in, on yeah. his legacy. But I, I actually, now that I remember, this is like a core memory unlocked, um, when I had a bit of money, and I was buying. Uh, when I had first had a bit of money to spend on random stuff, I'd buy like footy cards and mm-hmm. things. And then um, I found uh, like someone selling the uh, original Tarzo uh, things for Dragon Ball Z, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I, <laughs> I see the pictures. I'm yep. like, and and that specific picture unlocked a memory of when I was at school at that specific time, looking at it. It's so just like go. travel back in time through yep. that. You know, you can do it through smell taste mm-hmm. and then when you see a specific image it makes you like jump so i can uh, I, I i resonate now i know exactly what you're talking about but um yeah so going forward um where's the best place that someone could start a collection like to to look into to start their own michael jordan collection or whatever well if you're being specific michael jordan collections would have to start on ebay yeah, like you just can't buy the. A lot of this stuff never you. reached our shores. That's the thing. Like, mm-hmm. What I'm buying is is history, but more importantly, I appreciate that somebody in America preserved, took the time to. These boxes are over thirty years old, and look yeah, at it's you know, good, good effort. Like stuff like that, you have to really go on eBay and be thankful for that somebody really has taken the time and the effort to not crush it. It, things can get damaged very easily. You know what I mean? Like these are these are very yeah. frail and, and brittle boxes. So if you want to collect Michael Jordan toys, it's eBay. If yeah. you want to collect other stuff, there's a lot of shops here in Perth that can probably start you on your journey. Have you found something in Perth? Mm. Maybe a pop. Maybe a pop. Pop Funko. Yeah. But to me, th- there's no real thought or input put into these toys, the latest yeah. ones. And again, that's what I want to push for is... Let's re-release these. This is the only toy in the history of Michael Jordan toys that you can actually use. All the rest are deemed what I call dust collectors. They sit there <laughs> on a shelf, don't do nothing. Do you know what I mean? So I'm assuming that you're going to get that one signed by Jordan. I'd like to get... Well, both of these are the only two known complete box sets that that toy was supposed to come in. So I'll be pushing for both to get signed. <laughs> I'll, I'll be super greedy. Um and any of these these ones, especially the first one, to get a photo with Michael Jordan in that toy is going to elevate the interest and the value in that toy immediately. Yeah. Because this is the photo we all the photo we we only have at this stage. Would is you it, ever sell up? 
Uh, look, I've been on the record saying I would donate it to Michael Jordan. My figure in my head would have to be enough to warrant a house paid off. Nice. That's it. Because my goal now, as I said, my purpose has shifted because obviously I still want to do this, but I have a family now. And again, for me to, to if I would give up this for them to be secure. I love that. Because I've reached a level where I'm happy to have achieved, but I'm still pursuing it. But if it was to somebody came to me, offering me enough money, which I know what that figure is, mm -hmm. I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd do it because I want my family to be set. Whereas I'm not selfish in my nice. means anymore. I could still keep that one toy and still have the story. Yeah, very true. Do very you know true. That's and that's that's really all you need. Yeah. So we uh, we've got to wrap it up soon. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I appreciate so it. So far, um, I've got two more things I want to do. Sure. One is the red phone. Now the red phone, it rings, and today Michael's on the other line. I want you to pick it up. I want you to have a chat with him and what you would say straight away. Hello. Yes, yes, it is, Michael. It is your toy historian. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. Oh, really? Yeah, I've been looking forward to it too. What time? <laughs> Look, if you could send the jet. Yeah, yeah, it's just me, my fiance, and maybe just a couple of other people. That's all we need. Perth Airport, that's correct. Yeah, you know where Luke is. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. I oh, would love to. Yeah, hotel. Yeah, fantastic. Look, we're going to need some uh, transport as well, so that'd be fine. <laughs> But, um, yeah, look, if you could pencil that in, I'd love to meet you and uh, I'll bring a few things along with me. Great. Wonderful. Look forward to it. It's been a long time coming. Cheers. Thank you. I Bye. love that. Now that you've said it on the red phone, you've manifested it. We have. There you go. The manifestation phone. Now everyone <laughs> will try and buy that as a yeah, history right. thing. Um, yeah. Um, final section. This is the one I've been looking forward to just to, <laughs> just to stir you up. Uh, and I want to – you've been really good with the replies off camera. Um, obviously, the debate with who is the GOAT. Uh, my perspective is uh, – I mean, I grew up watching, watching Jordan, big fan of his, loved Space Jam and love his sneakers. I've got 60 pairs myself. Um, I'm not – well, you consider me a sneakerhead slash collector, know my thing. Um, but I just like the sh silhouette. Yep. more than anything. It's not just the fact that Jordan had, I just like the, the look of it. And my mum got me into sneakers, so that's like my nostalgic pack yeah, of sneakers. Cool. Yeah. But LeBron James is obviously uh, ticking some big uh, historic boxes. He's just taken over the most um, points mm -hmm. ever. And he's statting up some crazy numbers um, and rank one in a lot of things. Does that define the GOAT or what's your definition of the GOAT? The GOAT perspective is a personal one. Yes. Every, that's why we have these conversations and debates all the time because yes. it's from personal perspective. Me, what it is, is I guess influence of the game, like how Michael Jordan elevated the game, mm -hmm. the era. A lot of people discuss this was a much tougher era. Uh, Jordan's probably got more collective awards i would say because defensive player of the year stuff like that a slam dunk competition um championship finals as opposed to losses Th there's a lot that goes into michael jordan as to why he's the goat he still sells more shoes than any other player as well even currently mm -hmm. uh again it's it's just personal perspective but yeah. overall i think the international appeal and the legacy that he has left behind because for even Kobe and LeBron to be good, as good as what they are, they've had to look back to see what was done before them. Mm -hmm. Because Jordan was so elevated and great at what he did, he was able to help these people to become who they are. So, look, will somebody look at LeBron and possibly... Look, I, I give him respect for his endurance because to be able to do what he's done for so long, hats off to him. I uh, told you I'm a lifelong Lakers fan and he plays for the Lakers, so I've got to give him that nod. Um, but overall, Michael Jordan. I mean, Jordan's got even better toys than LeBron <laughs> and even more toys, you know what I mean? Like it's, LeBron doesn't have a toy historian. Let's just put that out there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan does. Um, so based off of the fact that he's got a historian, correct. you're the reason he's the GOAT. 100%. <laughs> 
hundred percent. Because what we're doing is we're preserving. He has to talk. Preserving to you now. the legend one tour at a time. It's also preserving the legacy. Yeah. So the legacy of Michael Jordan. People don't say, "Oh, this is the the LeBron of football." This is the it, it's the Michael Jordan is the reference of excellence. Mm. And I was up at the Crocodile Farm up in Broome with my fiance, and I remember them saying, and I, I just caught it, but this is the Michael Jordan of crocodiles. And I looked at it and I said, "Did you see that? Like they've mm. even referenced reptiles mm. as the Michael Jordan." <laughs> Do you know what I mean to so say they don't speak about LeBron in that term? And yeah. I know, it's, it's and it be... wasn't someone else. Like it wasn't the Tom Brady or the Wayne Gretzky. It was, and all of them want to be like Michael Jordan. Yeah. Shane Warne wore twenty three. To signify his respect for Michael Jordan, do you know what I mean? Like David Beckham wore twenty. Even LeBron, Le, LeBron wears twenty three to pay respect. Mm. So, in the goat conversation, it'll always be Michael, and for me, then Kobe, because Kobe was the almost mirror image of Jordan. Besides cultural impact, um, what has Jordan done outside of that for for people? I mean, obviously for yourself with this what else has he done well, i can't speak for him personally but i know he's uh i think it was the year last year or the year before donated 10 million uh to the make a wish foundation which he's always been a part of yeah so that's i know jordan uh lebron's done schools and stuff so i, I can't really speak too much on his personal stuff and in, in america because that's not something that i'm necessarily following is it fair to relate that to the greatest of all time in basketball specifically well we're talking about what i guess when you say basketball is what he's done on the court mm. when you're talking about as a person look it's a different era michael didn't have social media no you know and even if he did i'm sure he probably wouldn't want to be on it whereas lebron's embraced it and i guess that sort of helped him to yeah. raise his profile and awareness of what he's done off the court so it it's always going to be that conversation because we're different eras of style of play of visibility, yeah. of stuff like that. There's more of a mystique in a, a um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like Jordan's elevated, uh, even amongst other NBA players and, yeah. and just people. There's a, I don't want to say godlike, but there's there's that you know what I mean. Like yeah. with Michael Jordan, there's there's something so elevated about him as a person. What about the footage? I, I saw some recent footage uh and people were talking about this the last couple of months i don't know if you saw any of this but there was footage of him in that era looking like he was just running around postman <laughs> it's easy to capture a few moments yeah all right you forget the highlights the hours and hours let's let's say one, weeks months years of footage of jordan doing amazing stuff it's yeah. easy to pick and nitpick a few moments here and there do you know mm. what i mean like He's collectively, as I said, such an exciting player to watch that it's easy for people to pick apart a few moments here and there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, what about the Denver, Denver Nuggets? The the main man, the Denver Nuggets? At the moment? Mm. Anthony Edwards? Um, is it the Denver Nuggets? And Timberwolves, I think it is. No, no, no. Um, the reigning, reigning champs. How, how do I think about them? Yeah. Not much because I'm a Lakers fan, so I'm very one-eyed. So so the players like uh, Luca and Joker. Okay, yeah. Do you reckon uh, MJ could have stood a chance against them? <laughs> stood a chance. Mixing eras together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, what you got to understand, and this is the difference, I guess, between Michael and LeBron. This is the way I see it, again, yeah. personal perspective. Michael has a killer attitude. He's going to kill you. He's going to annihilate you. He's going to find your weakness. If he finds one and he has one of his own against you, he's going to work on that and come back and destroy you. Yeah. That's what he does. That's who yeah. Michael is. LeBron doesn't have that. Kobe had that as well. He did because Kobe, again, is that mirror image of Jordan. Yeah. You know what I mean? LeBron doesn't have it. How would he go? How would Jordan go against Luke? Jordan would kill it. He would because, find a way. Because you can't touch the players in this league at the moment. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. back then, it was a lot of hand checking. You see what the the Detroit Pistons did to what Michael Jordan when he come down the lane. They called the Jordan rules, where they would hit him, elbow him, and take. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. So he would absolutely kill it. It doesn't matter what era Jordan was in. It's that that mindset. It's that 
physical and like capabilities and stuff that set him to me upon anybody else. And again, we're talking about somebody who's not even my favourite player, but I have to give credit to where, where it's due because he is just, he was like the perfect specimen of a basketball player. He looked the part, he played the part, and he'd just kill you. Love that, love that. Thank you so much for your time, Josh. Thank you, I appreciate it. And, I, and thank you for having me here today. It's been a great day, I really appreciate no it. No worries. I heard you're uh, opening the, the, the place up to, for people to have a look at your collection. <laughs> True, false? That is false. Oh, false. Okay. This stuff, because I do FIFO still, this stuff belongs in storage. Yeah. I won't lo- tell you where that location <laughs> is. Um, but it is done for good purpose. Yeah. Uh, until we get our own house and security and stuff like that, it's uh, securely stored away uh, in a nice dark spot where uh, thieves and other people can't get to. So, no, yeah. I, I, I have done exhibitions here in Perth. But uh, opening it up to the public is, uh, look, it's, it's probably a long way away at the moment. Okay. Awesome. Well, whatever happens, I yep. wish you all the best. Thank and, you very um, much. good luck on the journey to uh, hang out with the GOAT. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really look forward to it. And, and it, once I do, because I don't say if, because it's all... If doesn't exist. No, it's all part of positive manifestation. When I do, I'd like to come back and have a chat and share my experiences as well, because... Today, for those who don't know, today being here is part of that journey to getting to there. So I've told my videographer and my fiance, when we get that call, like I've just received then, yep. we're going. Still. And then we're going to come back. And it's about lift, coming back and pulling up somebody else, inspiring others so they can follow and pursue. Because if I can meet Michael Jordan from here, you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Because it's almost impossible. Love that. Thank you. Great message. All right, guys, if you have any questions for Josh, send him some love on the Instagram. It's the only place he exists. Maybe if he existed on TikTok and other places. Jordan. I choose to take the hard path, <laughs> not, not the easy road. And, uh, yeah, um, his uh, gram's in the description, so go check out his collection. And uh, shout-outs to Jaden, shout-outs to Frasier. Um, shout outs to the fiance for chilling yes, in the chair. The yeah, whole she's time. been great. Thank you, darling. Next Appreciate time, it. next time we're chatting, you'll probably be. Uh, yeah, fu- oh yeah, we're the baby, little baby girl over here. That's yeah, right. So. That's right. So lots of things. F- happen future with. owner of all this. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorted. Um, but yeah, have a good uh, rest of your day. And if you're watching from the future, you made it. How cool is that? The bank. Mm-hmm.